welcome to the MBS Show, episode 217. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Will. Hello, Norman. Hey there, how are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Something tells me that you're not. Oh, no, no, no. It's just that we get a, another... Well, you know, if out this new episode, we got some new characters. And we get another annoying male character. <laughs> That seems to be the trend of MLP. Either they're annoying or they're not good. I will say at least this, though. That they're, they're, they were small in, the, in there, but Fluttershy's parents are an adorable couple. I like to see them and the, and the cakes get together for like some sort of couple thing. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Only they get away or something like that. But uh, I don't think we get a name for their parents besides Mr. Shy and Mr. Shy. But other than that... It was a pretty good episode, but we're not going to talk about the episode on this one. Yeah, we're going to talk about news. But still, good episode. Like, I can't wait to talk about it because it's much fun, much fun. And Zephyr Breeze, how do you... I'm still confused with that one. Oh, well, you know, probably just like they were expecting a... They were expecting a Philly, and they had to change the name halfway through. It's not even that. Like, you got Mr. Shy, Mrs. Shy, and then his name is Zephyr Breeze, and you got Fluttershy. Like, well, maybe it's a, maybe it's a familial thing. Like, they named him after his grandfather or something. Eh, probably. But I wasn't expecting yeah. that color scheme. Huh. <laughs> to which it's like, yeah, we named you after your grandfather. <laughs> and like, his ghost is floating there. You're another disappointment to me, Sonny. <laughs> That's just mean. But accurate. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's just going to be the two of us for this week. And well... You're all alone with me, Norman. All alone. Yeah. We need to put you to work. Work? <laughs> yeah, right. Like anyone's ever done that in this stream. <laughs> uh, not recently. But anyway, with the, just the both of us, I think we'll just pop into news. And... Talking about working, it seems that Sega, out of all people, are trying to get back into the swing of it with Sonic getting more work. <laughs> uh, Sonic has enough work. It's just they've never really paid attention to what has worked. Uh, yeah. But still, but still, uh, they recently did a survey and said survey was asking about um, how interested would you be in playing a Sonic game featuring the following collections of characters? And one of those characters are My Little Pony characters. So, ooh, this is interesting. No, 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 no. you got to be kidding me. This. Okay, I'm double checking this. I ain't joking. No! I ain't joking. Um, one of the things that they listed here is My Little Pony, Adventure Time, Pixar character, Capcom character, Looney Tune characters, Disney characters, Nintendo, Dragon Ball... Uh, what else? Kirby, Mickey Mouse, and there's a whole bunch of them, including Pikachu, Bomberman, Mega Man, the Mario Brothers, and what else? Mm, well, another thing they're asking is, would you be interested in playing games that are platformers, or Sonic should be in an action game, and all that stuff. So, Sega is kind of venturing, and maybe calling other things because in recent memory one of the few crossover games that Sega had was Project Cross Zone I think that's Capcom uh, Tecmo Koei or was it just um, Namco Bandai and Capcom crossover into one world where oh yeah Capcom versus everything Capcom versus Tecmo Sentai uh, Capcom versus Marvel Capcom versus uh, pre... (laughs) Capcom 2016 versus Capcom 1990. <laughs> Still, Capcom 1990 would kick their ass. <clears throat> Not really. Well, uh, that's besides the point. The point is, <laughs> Sega is, well, kind of trying to expand, trying to probably do something interesting with the crossover genre. Oh, that'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. Right now, they have crossed over with Sonic in the Olympics, so that's cool. Just need to know where they're heading from this point on. Well, keep in mind though, the Olympics are more of a general thing itself, a, a sporting event. They can cross over that and, you know, Sonic, uh, cameoing in other, uh, other third party works and whatnot, like Super Smash Brothers, of course, is just them allowing him to be used. 
but to actually have something go with the Sonic property to actually combine it with something else is, well, it's going to be tricky uh, legally and also <laughs> design wise and not to mention quality wise because come on, let's face it, mm-hmm. Sega has their record of a me- they, they, they never stick with anything. Even when something that works, like Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations, which was heavily criticized as being very good and back to formula, they immediately change it again, they'll write again, because they just can't stick to something. They're too afraid of actually doing something. It's like, it's always gotta be reinventing the wheel every time. Only eventually they're starting to realize that they're running out of wheels. I, I don't think that's the case for Sega in general, because they're trying to do something new. If, if you take a look, see at Sonic, um, Unleash, they're trying to do the whole fast and slow kind of gameplay where you got the fast Sonic at the very beginning, at the daylight, then you get a slow Sonic with the God of War kind of play style in Night Sonic, which is a interesting gameplay mechanic. I won't say it's good, but it's interesting. And Colors was kind of interesting with the aliens. And Generations was interesting with how they try to combine the old and the new. And, well, this one here, well, we'll see. Because having Sonic paired up with, let's just say, Rainbow Dash for a speed kind of game would be cool. Now I'm just thinking of all the crossover possibilities. Sonic and Looney Tunes is one of the options. Hmm. But how could you do that? (laughs) Like, I'm just wondering... What's up, Robotnik? (laughs) It's Eggman! <laughs> but still, oh god, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> That'll be a short game. Duck season, hedgehog season, duck season, hedgehog season, duck season, hedgehog season, duck season, fire! <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, oh well. Talking about crossovers, we got another one. It seems that Hasbro is kind of trying new things, and this time they're doing this crossover with um, all their publications for IDW. Uh, I think they're calling it Hasbro Revolution. Revolution. Oh. And this is all of their IPs into one canonized universe. Okay, G.I. Joe and Transformers already, that's something pretty freaking awesome to my head. They've done that before. Um, They've done that in the older comics, which was interesting. But now... From the pictures I've seen here, they're trying to involve the classic mask show cartoon that, well, car is vehicles transforming into other vehicles. It's a pretty good show, if you remember them. And they're trying to do that. One of the IPs that the fans are asking is My Little Pony. Is that going to be in that canonized universe? And IDW for MLP comic editor Bobby Kernel has say, uh, has said that not so much a crossover as a shared universe. At this time, there's no plan to include My Little Pony, but it's a possibility. Be very hard. Uh, out of all of Hasbro's IPs, MLP is kind of like the most... I, I don't know. I just don't think it would fit in with a lot of the other universes. It's so different both in tone and setting. Because mm-hmm. it's a fantasy element. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Transformers, G.I. Joe, and those are the only two I can name off the top of my head. I'm really kind of dumb at the moment, but you know, those are both set. Th- th- those are their two other m- main, most popular uh, franchises, and those are at least set in somewhat real world settings. You know, science fiction and uh, a- a action adventure. Both can be combined very well. Mm-hmm. And the possibility of the Transformers crossing over with GI Joe, crossing over with Mask, is high because well, you got a robot. You, you got a vehicle that can change into robots. You got robots, robots, you got vehicles, yeah. you got explosions, you got, you got everything that makes Michael Bay happy. Yeah. And it's a possibility. This, this crossover universe is cool. And saying that ponies won't work in this crossover universe is, well, I'm, I'm sure that writers on Filmfic could do something to make it work. But to make it acceptable for the general public, that's something else. But still, I really can't wait to see where this goes because if they do introduce ponies into this universe, it's going to be interesting. Really, really interesting. It's going to be chaotic. Oh, yes, indeed. But if you have Discord there, it's like, oh, snap a finger, everybody's a lemon. <laughs> it's like, what's the point? <laughs> MLP's overpowered. <laughs> Show over. Uh, but- 
Actually, <laughs> I would love that. Mars is like, ha! I, the mighty star scream, shall destroy these insufferable little quadrupeds. <laughs> and suddenly he just like gets picked up by Twilight Sparkle and gets smashed back and forth in telekinesis. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't that happen in uh, Death Battle? Oh yeah, only it was Rainbow Dash who yeah. did it. But and the best part was is that you know when they went to a uh, a convention yeah. for Hasbro Publishing or Transformers. <laughs> now they went to it. They went to a Transformers Transform convention. Yeah. Yeah, and they asked them, and so like everyone's like, "Yeah, Rainbow Dash would win." Yeah, and all except for all except for like a few who didn't know who and, Rainbow Dash was, but it was just like, and the it was, few, it's Starscream. The few people that said that uh, Starscream would win was fangirls, like literally fangirls. There are few guys that said that Starscream would win, but honestly, they said the facts, and like Starscream never wins. And anything, yes. And when he does win, he only wins for fifteen seconds before being killed. Yes. <laughs> Uh, poor Star Scream. We hardly knew he. Yeah, I don't. Never do. I don't think we want to know him. <laughs> uh, but this today is a slow week. Like not much news, not much to run. Yeah, we got a lot of we got a lot of slow news, man. It's only been. I, I think news only picks up when it's a uh, non. Uh, when we're not doing shows, <laughs> you know, when, when there aren't episodes coming out, then we have more news, but. Now there's episodes coming out, oh man. Yeah, like today's episode was pretty cool and all. I wish you could talk about it right now, but spoilers ahead for people who have not watched it. So, yeah, we could probably discuss. Nah, 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 nah. Save it for your save it for your discussion with Silver Quill and all those others. You know, the, the show you never invite me to. Not that I'm bitter or anything. You're always invited if you want to come. Nah, nah, man. I don't want to intrude. Nah. <laughs> nah, I'll send the invite properly when. The time's right. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. But... Actually, the, cool, the the thing is, though, is that uh, I got to say, though, um, I don't know. I kind of felt like, you know, last week's episode was just an episode. And this one was definitely a step up. But I, I don't know. Um, I think the series is at least getting a little bit too slice of lifey. Mm, I, uh, I can see that. I, I, I think the, here's the thing that. I'm not sure what to say because some people really do like the slice of life and some don't. I, I don't know. What are you on? Like, do you like the slice of life or do you like the more action oriented episodes? I don't mind either, but I like it more when it's fantastical settings. Like even when the slice of life is happening, I still like them to remind us it isn't a fantastical setting. Hmm. What do you think about Gondola Fire episode? What do you think? Oh, which episode? Um, the Spike meets uh, Princess Ember. Oh yeah, that was great. That was a superb one, in my opinion. World building, fantasy, adventure, Spike being awesome. Actually, when you think about it, this entire season, Spike is actually pretty much on par, perfectly written. Mm -hmm. it's surprising. It only it only took him five seasons to get some respect. <laughs> well, technically six. Oh, six, yeah, I guess, okay, yeah. Well, there was one time where he sang on stage in front of thousands for a song he doesn't really know. Ugh. Hey, hey, hey. I think we all agree with Pinkie Pie, he nailed it. <laughs> Alright? Yeah! He nailed it all in, he nailed it in all the wrong ways. Yeah, he nailed it right into a coffin. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, I, I I like where we're going with this one. Like you mentioned, that you feel that this season feels more slice of life ish instead yeah, of. Yeah, but uh, at the same time, some of these slice of life episodes have been great. It's just well, we're the show has always been a balance between adventure and slice of life, mm -hmm. and some are a bit some seasons are a bit more actiony than others, and. I don't know. I mean, I, I still love each episode watching them. I just kind of feel like, uh, I don't know. Maybe I just want them to hit a little bit harder with their, with their stuff. Mm. Like I'd love an AJ episode where it deals with death. <laughs> I don't think that's going to come out anytime soon now. Come on, it'd be perfect. I mean, like uh, something basically reminds Apple Bloom the fact that she doesn't have parents. And, you know, then it gets her to actually asking about her ma or dad because she doesn't remember them because they died before she was born or, mm. or she they died right after she was born or something like that. Yeah. And then we get into the whole thing of, like, Applejack having to raise a young sister alongside her older brother and her grandmother being the maternal figure. 
hmm. to her little sister, basically. Ah, yes, yes. Then getting into the struggles of raising a young foal, and then getting into the struggles of having to deal with both of your parents being dead. <laughs> ah, yes, I can feel the feels flowing right Very now. grim, but you know what? That's a topic that I, I, I want the show to address it, but I, I got no idea how they should do it, because death is a cycle of life. Things comes and goes, it's part of the course. But for the show to deal with it, I don't know. It takes a good writer to tackle it. Oh, definitely. They have to get a good writer to tackle it. I think probably the best kids uh, show that I remember tackling uh, death was when Sesame Street had to do it in the 70s about Mr. Hooper. Yeah, yeah. That, that was sad because Mr. Hooper was kind of an icon for the show. The actor who played Mr. Hooper passed away. So they need to address it somehow. Yeah, and they, but they did it, they did it well, they did it, it's a serious thing, and, but I don't know, it's just like, you know, you know, I would love them to tackle this subject, but I'd like them to do it with dignity and good writing, mm. and, you know, a good amount of uh, heart to it as well. But you know what, if we just get slice of life stuff and uh, the simple morals of the day, that's fine. Yeah, I... I mean, you know, you know, I mean, even as a, as a show, it's still entertaining. There's still some good jokes here and there. There's still some good. It's 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 a good cartoon. It's still on the good cartoons list, all right? It's not dropping off there. Mm-hmm. Not that they do something like introduce Poochie or something <laughs> to try to be radical. Oh God, Poochie! It's like, hey, Pinkie Pie, these are the new inventions. It's like, ooh, I'm gonna hashtag this. <laughs> oh God, oh, sir! No. I, if I if I, if I hear those words, or I'm gonna tweet about this and MLP, I'm just like, oh, I'm out. I'm done. You know what? I I would like them to say hashtag, but. It needs to make sense, yeah. I don't know. It's like maybe talking about potatoes. Tag your hashes, your hash browns. Yeah, something like that. That could work. I don't know. We're not writers for the show. But remember that one line that Pinkie Pie said, not even these tweets make sense anymore. Uh, that was actually Fluttershy. Yeah. Not even but tweets yeah. make sense anymore. Like, <laughs> do they ever? Indeed, do they ever. Yeah. But yeah, it's... Uh, nah, the show... Show's still good. Show's still good. It's just, I don't know. I'm an action adventure guy, so that's me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they do have some action adventure, but the amount of action adventure on this show has gotten a bit less, I think. We're only on episode 11 now. So. Well, who knows what they're doing with that Gardens of, Guardians of Harmony Ooh, thing? Yeah. Who knows what they're doing with that? Yeah, that's, that's way into the future, and that's involving the Equestria Girls line thing, right? No? Oh, it is. No, no. I, I'm on. I think it's a. No, I think it's no. a new thing. There's the Legend of Everfree. Sorry, Guardians of Harmony is Harmony. something to do. Something yeah, else. Something yeah. Else. Well, I will. I will say this though. Just just from what they've been hinting and what the toy line has been doing, it's just. I'm really hoping the changelings come back, and I really hope Chrysalis just stays evil. Just like you know, like an evil Maleficent. That would be awesome. Yeah. I I think Chrysalis is one of those characters that's that's unredeemable. There's no way for her to be technically redeemed because in the general scheme of things, she's doing the right thing for her people. Well, even then, I would actually also love an episode where it dealt with change lanes and dealt with, hey, just because you've... Actually, that'd be a really good lesson for kids today, and some adults could also do it. Just because you've had a horrible experience with some people of a certain of a certain race does not mean you should color everyone as evil on that race. Hmm. I wonder what political message that could mean in today's society. Did they do that with the buffaloes? No, the buffaloes is just more like you need to get along and compromise and reach understandings. The changelings are more literally the message of, Hey, you know, these, these uh, group of people, they treated you horribly, but that doesn't mean everybody from that race is evil or out to get you. Uh, that that's a hard one. That is a hard one to deal with. Oh, it's pretty pretty damn easy. You just gotta beat them over the head and just like stop acting like a racist scumbag. Oh <laughs> uh, yes. But they hurt me. It's just like uh yeah yeah that group hurt you. So why aren't you? Why are you angry at this group? Pro- well the, the, the same right? <laughs> wow. Ooh. Made a general. Do all do all Pegasi look the same to you? A Pegasi knocked a rain cloud on me. Now I hate them. <laughs> all Pegasi are horrible. Stupid feather dusters. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> anyway, uh, with that idea in your. But you see, that would be that would be a, that'd be a good one. Yeah. Okay. With changing probably in season seven once the whole attack's done. Who knows? It could well, work. We don't even know if there is going to be an attack. For all we know, it could literally just be a 
That could could be nothing. The the season finale for this could actually involve uh, Starlight Glimmer meeting... um, Sunburst? uh, No, no, wait. She already met Sunburst. Yeah, I I know. We meet meet again. Or Sunset? No, no. The the Sunset Shimmer is like... No, no. We'll just meet yet another um, Twilight Sparkle um, thesaurus. (laughs) Quickly to the thesaurus. It's like, okay. uh, Midnight... Uh, midnight, uh, twinkle. Midnight twinkle. <laughs> Yay! Not a villain for the future. Uh, write it down. Print. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. And their horrible backstory of they had their legs scuffed <laughs> and now they want to take over Equestria. To be sure no one else gets their legs scuffed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bad fan fiction aside, I think we can end this. Unless there's something yeah. we want to add in. No, no, I think I've already added in way much. <laughs> uh, I, I should shut up more. <laughs> we need you to talk more. Actually, we should just end this so we can go play Overwatch because we're addicted to it. <laughs> yes, indeed. Anyway, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. SweetieBot will retweet this show and talk about stuff related to the show. And as for me, you can catch me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. Tickling my fancy now is food. I love the food. Ah, uh, well. And Will, where can the good audience at home reach you? Well, if they want to find me, if you dare and journey very far, you can find me on DeviantArt at W-I-L-I-Z-I-N dot DeviantArt dot com. Or if you want to read some of my hellacious tales, you can go to filmfiction.net users, W-I-L underscore I underscore Z-I-N. Or if you want to read my Tumblr, which has a bunch of stories ranging from the macabre to D&D to cute pictures of adorable little puppies, <laughs> you can find it on W-I-L-I-Z-I-N dot Tumblr dot com. No Overwatch jokes? Oh, well, um, I, I guess I could say, uh, I'll just be Tribuorn for the day. My job here is done, but you didn't do anything. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Kill Camp shows his turret doing the stuff, not him. <laughs> I- actually, that, that's, that, that is the kicker, because right before we were doing this, I literally was playing Overwatch, waiting for the episode to start, and I did get play of the game as Trobjorn, <laughs> getting a 22 kill streak, no death, and an entire match defending. And I did get kill of the game by just literally activating my ult and killing three people. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, and also, please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. And I have to pimp this out. The MBS show review is, and discussion is on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Links are in the show notes, so please subscribe to that show. Will will come to the show and talk about his opinions on said episode. We don't know which one yet because we're planning. <laughs> <laughs> one day. Yes, one day. Because this thing doesn't record on a weekly basis. It's really confusing. And uh, let's just say that I'm happy doing this, but the scheduling is hectic. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And hey, Norman. Yo. We've been recording for an hour since about 11. Oh. So you know what that means? <laughs> it's high noon. Ah. I'm Will. Uh, we'll just catch you next week for another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>